hi guys welcome to pixel affair it's kobe here so this video is a quick video i had to do about a question that was asked me in my dm about the tracer hub object right so i have this scene here if i hit play you can see the splines are going now if i go back and start i hit play you can see it's it starts like some splines and stuff starts right from here right even if i go back again so what i literally have to do is to keep going back and forth to eventually the spline settle because cinema 4d tries to calculate it and stuff like that right right see it's still coming in and all of that so it's very very hectic because my 4d is always calculating it you know the first frame you don't usually get it right you have to keep playing it back and forth so you hit play forward once and now before you get it right right so that's the issue with the tracer object most of the time another issue is that when you are playing it's going forward you can't actually scrub back you know i mean let me select you can't scrub back you know everything is messed up you know that's another issue the third issue is also that for instance um let's go back so if i hit play right and let's say i want to um let me go back again you know that's the issue so i'll go back a frame and come back and now let's say i want to render i am um, frame 180 to see how it looks like right so i have hit this head material i've applied it to the trace object and if i hit play and i hit render you can see it's the hair material but i just want to skip this part and render just the frame 180 so i can go into my render settings and i'll type in the um, frame 180 right and i want to render that frame and if i hit render um you can see we don't have anything actually sometimes you get something but it's all over the place so you can even go back to the start of the frame and if i hit render you can see it's giving you something so it's not accurate unless you allow it to start rendering right from the start right and sometimes if you have an issue and your um render or animation cut right you can have all those kind of issues with the tracer object so someone was asking me how to solve um, that kind of issue and the easiest way is to cache um, the tracer so I basically told the person is for the person to cache or bake the tracer but he didn't know how to do so I felt like I, I think I should do a video quick video explaining how to bake the tracer so right to bake the tracer it's very very simple so first of all I'll go back to frame zero and if I I'll when I get to frame zero I'll just press this key and go to frame no my negative one and i'll press this key and it'll come back to frame zero and now if i hit play it will start smoothly right so that's my way around if i go back i make sure i go to frame negative one and now i press this one to come to frame zero and everything will start afresh now if i hit play everything moves smoothly now how do you bake um the tracer object it's very very simple so in this earlier versions of sima 4d um I, I don't know which version that this particular um, feature came in, I think probably R25, but all you have to do is to right click on the um, tracer, make sure you select it, right click and come down and you can see we have down here big as Alembic, right? Or you can see big as Alembic and delete and that one you will delete the tracer and bake it as Alembic, but don't I don't you know usually do that i also make sure i have a backup of my original file so you choose bake as alembic and now it quickly bakes it and now you can see we have a new spline here tracer so now i can go ahead and disable my tracer and now if i hit play you can see we have our tracer but there is an issue right there is an issue um with the alembic you can see it starts with the splines already so it means it started like with the calculation and all of the issues that it had so how do we solve that issue so let's delete the alembic right because it's not it didn't be right even though we have everything but we don't want these extra splines so let me delete it and now we are basically going to resume it again if i hit play for us to see see everything is there and if i go back we will have that same issue if i hit play some splines comes before the whole thing starts again so what i have to, you have to make sure you do is to Make sure you go back to frame zero right 
press this one to move a frame so that like you see some of the simulation press it to go back to refresh it you can actually do that a couple of times let me actually get out of the camera you can do it a couple of times so press one frame to make sure our simulation is fine and go back to frame zero and now if we press one frame you can see like it starts right from where we want it so now you can simply right click on the tracer and now come down to the um big as alembic and hopefully this time we get our um tracer big right you can see everything is fine so now i can disable the tracer now and now we have the alembic and now if i hit play it starts from right from you know where we want you can move it back and forth and now if i had the hair material to the uh, alembic spline here that we have and now we can set it at any frame that we want we don't necessarily have to be on that frame or have to render the whole thing i can just see um frame 180 by 180 can um close this one and i hit render and now you can see we have it rendering in here so that's a quick tip uh, this is a quick tip i actually wanted to put out because i felt it was necessary to do this now if you are not using cinema 4d like the latest versions which has this feature as big as alembic another way around this is to basically come into your file um export and you can export as alembic so in this case you have to make sure you go through the same thing make sure let me enable the supply address again go back you no, know, make sure everything starts from frame zero, right? So you can hit it frame one and go back to zero, one, zero. You make sure it's safe and you put it at frame one so that you see some of the splines or something. Now you can simply come to um, your file, export, and export um, Alembic. You can see we have Alembic ABC, so you can choose Alembic, and in there. We have so many options but what i figured figured work for me is i i choose them um, selection only and you make sure splines this one splines and caves are checked it's very very important without it you don't have it you wouldn't have your olympic so you make sure splines and caves are checked and now if you hit okay you can save it wherever you want it so i'll save it um anywhere somewhere like and now i have it saved so if i now come into my wherever you saved it you can go into your um, explorer i drag and drop it in i'll choose okay and now we can see we have allen big big that is just the spline don't have the cameras because we didn't make those ones so it's just the spline that we did big now if i hit play you can see it's playing smoothly so now if you want you can now copy this and take it into any scene or the scene that you are working on that you want to use it in so this is a quick tip that um, I, f I feel like I should actually talk about. And I hope this was useful. You learned something for it. By the way, if you um, want to know how I sort of did this um, moving, like how I got the splines to move this way, it's just a simple, um, let me actually enable it. So it's just a simple circle, right? Let me disable all of this. Let me go out of the camera. And you can see it's just a simple circle which is which i've used i don't i didn't use any keyframe because i don't want to um keyframe anything so i use just the time effector to in, keep it rotating right uh, keep it moving and um rotating so if i select the time effector and come to the parameters you can see i've let me disable this everything so all he's doing the time effector is basically moving it over time and rotating it as well right so it's move, rotating it on the P minus 19, it's moving it. And I've, the reason why it's doing that is that in the time effect, if you come to the deformer tab, I've changed the deformation. It will ideally it will be off, but I've set it to object. And I've done the same thing with the random. So whilst it's moving and rotating, I've added randomness to it. And with the random to the deformation, I've changed the deformation to points. And now it's adding some deformation to it so you can see what's it's happening this is what's going on and then i've used the plane effector to scale it down over time but to have proper control over it which time i wanted to scale and when i wanted to get to a particular size i use the plane effector right so if i enable it and i come into the fields you can see i use time 
to control um, the perimeter. So I want it to scale to almost minus one over um, 230 frames. And I use the time um, field to actually control it, right? So if I go back, you can see it's playing now. It's getting smaller over time. So that's basically what's happening. You can actually keyframe this if you want, but I didn't want to use keyframe, so I decided to use this. And all I've done is I've added the tracer. So if I go back to the tracer, and if I hit play, you can see this is what you have. Then I've hidden the spline. So that's how I actually got the spline to move in this way. I hope this was useful and you learned something from it. Um, this was a quick tip, which I figured I had to um, do something about it. Um, hope you enjoyed it and you you loved it. If there's anything, you can let me know in the comment or you can DM me on DM me on Instagram at Pixel Affair. And if I have any solution or I have any idea of whatever you're talking about, I'll try and do a tutorial on it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.